So welcome to unit 11. We are on the final module of unit 11, testing and individual differences. And this module is module number 64, group differences and questions of bias and, que and the question of bias. And this is definitely um, a fairly controversial topic. So it's not a very long module. And again, if you're following uh, along for the first time, these slides align with Meyer Psychology for the AP course third edition. So the learning targets for module 64 are to be able to examine how and why the genders differ in mental ability scores, to examine how and why there are some racial and ethnic group differences in mental ability scores, and discuss whether intelligence tests are inappropriately biased and explain the influence of a term called stereotype threat on test takers' performance. So how do the genders differ in terms of mental ability or IQ scores? Um, in Ian Deary's 1932 testing of all Scottish 11-year-old girls, 11-year-olds, sorry, girls' average IQ score was 100.6 and boys was 100.5. So as far as G, general intelligence, is concerned, boys and girls and men and women are pretty similar, almost the same. Yet most people find difference, differences more newsworthy, and there are some differences that have been found repeatedly through the research. So what does the research re show regarding gender differences in mental abilities? So girls outpace boys in spelling, verbal fluency, locating objects, detecting emotions, and sensitivity to touch. And there's some references on these studies. Um, boys seem to, to outperform girls, and, and this isn't across the board. I, as we talk about all of these things, we need to remember that in terms of gender, in terms of race, in terms of ethnicity, there are way more within group differences than between group differences. But there are some differences between the groups and, and researchers are trying to understand why that might be. So going back to this, boys outperform girls in tests of spatial ability and complex math problems, though in math overall, math computation and overall math, there hardly seems to be a difference. And there are some references um, for some of this information if you want to look at it further. So how does a gendered society potentially affect intelligence differences? Researchers report that culturally influences preferences may explain why American women more than men um, potentially avoid math intensive vocations. This is, you know, this is a big topic of interest among people. Why are there differences in scores? Is it something to do with some sort of underlying um, genetic differences or is it something due to environmental influences? So again, we're seeing that nature versus nurture woven into this module trying to figure out um, what is having more of an effect. Social expectations and divergent opportunities also shape boys and girls' interests and abilities. Um, more gender equal culture, such as Sweden and Iceland, um, seem to have a little bit less of the gender math gap than in some other countries. So, you know, there's a, some information and there's a TED talk um, you know, about some of the messages that girls get and whether those have had an effect on girls' math performance. You know, there was a teen talking Barbie doll. <laughs> I've never saw it. Um, and this apparently came out when I was younger um, that said math class is tough. And uh, I kind of remember later on learning about it and being very controversial. After Mattel's Teen Talk Barbie was re released in 1992, objections by groups such as Nas the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics and the American Association of University Women, along with a lot of other public outrage, caused toy maker Mattel to withdraw the math class phrase from future Barbie doll production. So women in math today. So this woman, sadly, who um, passed away a couple years ago, in 2014, Iranian math professor, and I'm not sure how to say her name well, so I apologize, Maryam Mirzakhani <laughs> became the first woman to win the Field Medal, which is math's most admired award. What was her advice to people who want to know more about math? Practice patience. The beauty of mathematics only shows itself to more patient followers. So, you know, as it notes at the bottom, the International Fields Medal is mass equivalent of the Nobel Prize and is awarded every four years for outstanding discoveries in mathematics. So the while there are some differences in mathematics, it doesn't, you know, they're not, that's not across the board. There are some women that are exceptional mathematicians. 
um, that are as you know exceptional as any male mathematician. So even though there are some differences, you know, we shouldn't take the fact that there are some differences to mean more than it does. So how is the gender gap narrowing? Since the 1970s, as gender equity has increased in the US, the boy to girl ratio among 12 to 14 year olds with very high SAT math scores above 700 has declined from 13 to one to three to one. So what you can see, there's still um, a difference there, a pretty large difference. It has decreased significantly because there have been changes in our environment that have influenced that. So the most reliable male edge in mental abilities appears to be in spatial ability. Tests like the one shown here, this would be a test that would be potentially given on an IQ test. The solution requires mental rotation of a three-dimensional object. And again, it's not a huge difference, but there does seem to be a male edge on these sorts of tests of spatial ability. How about racial and ethnic group score differences in mental ability? There are group differences in average intelligence test scores. So in terms of these different groups, you know, um, New Zealanders of European descent seem to outscore some of the native Ma Maori. Israeli Jews tend to outscore Israeli Arabs. And again, these are, these are not necessarily large differences and within group differences are much more significant than between group differences, okay? But it's important to, to note that on these tests, there are some differences and researchers and psychologists are trying to understand why that might be. How does environment contribute to differences in mental abilities? We've seen that heredity in the last module contributes to individual differences in intelligence, but group dif differences in a heritable trait may be due enti to entirely environmental things, influenced by factors such as minority oppression, poverty, or war. Um, so which explains the difference, genes or environment? This is a good visual to kind of think about. Even if the variation between members within a group reflects genetic differences, as it does, it's showing you with these flowers, the average difference between the groups may be wholly different due to the environment, right? If you're growing up in you know, the poor soil versus the fertile soil, this is a good image to try to remember. How alike genetically are humans? We're actually very, 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 very alike. <laughs> it's something we should keep in mind. Consider the average genetic variance between two Icelandic villagers or between two Kenyans greatly exceeds the group differences between Icelanders and Kenyans, right? So again, within group variability, it's much more significant than between group variability. Light-skinned Europeans and dark-skinned Africans are genetically closer than our dark-skinned Africans and dark-skinned Aboriginal Australians. Is race a neatly defined category? No, many social scientists see race primarily as a social construction without well-defined physical boundaries as each race blends seamlessly into the race of its geographical neighbors. In one genetic analysis of more than 160,000 people living in the US, most with less than 28% African ancestry said they were white and those with more said they were African-American. How has performance on IQ tests changed from generation to generation? The IQ test performance of today's better fed, better educated, and more test prepared population exceeds that of the 1930s population by a greater margin. Remember what we talked about in a previous module, the Flynn effect. And if you didn't catch, catch the Flynn effect, make sure you look that up, it's fascinating. And there might be a chance that it's actually reversing again, but the Flynn effect is, um, there's a good TED talk on that. Um, so again, the intelligence test performance of today's better fed, better educated, and more test prepared population exceeds that of the 1930s population by a greater margin than the intelligence score of the average white today exceeds that of the average black American. So what does the research show about the importance of schools and culture? Countries whose economies create a large wealth gap between rich and poor also tend to have a large rich versus poor IQ test score gap. In China and Turkey, People in poorer regions have the lowest IQ test scores and those in the wealthier regions have the highest. Asian students who have outperformed North American students on such tests have also spent 30% more time in school and much more time in and out of school studying math. Scientifically speaking, when we think about bias, are the tests biased? The scientific meaning of bias hinges on a test validity. And if you remember, validity means is something measuring what it's purporting to measure. So in terms of IQ test validity, 
um, it, it hinges upon whether it predicts future behavior only for some groups of test takers versus others. Like is IQ predictive only for males versus females? Is IQ pre predictive for one racial or ethnic group versus another? In this statistical meaning of the term, the near consensus among psych psychologists, and there's a reference there for if you want to look into this, has been that major US aptitude tests are not biased in terms of statistical terms. But what is another way to consider bias? A test can be considered biased if it detects not only innate differences in IQ, but also differences caused by cultural experiences. So for example, Eastern European immigrants in the early 1900s lacked the experience and the culture to answer questions about their new culture. And so they were uh, um, unfortunately and incorrectly class often classified as feeble-minded. In this popular sense, intelligence tests are biased. They measure developed abilities, which reflect in part education and experiences. Stereotype threat is a fascinating phenomenon in psychology. It's a self-confirming concern that one will be evaluated based on a negative stereotype. So some of the earliest research, some research by Stephen Spencer and his colleagues gave a difficult math question to equally capable men and women, and the women didn't do as well, except when they had been led to and the women did not do as well, except when they had been led to expect that women usually do as well as men on the test. Expecting to struggle with math because the stereotype of the woman as weaker in math existed, the women performed more poorly on the test. Now, I want to note that there is some current research that has come out that said may question this idea of stereotype threats. Again, within, in terms of the replication crisis in psychology, there's some information coming out that the stereotype threat idea may not be as cut and dry as we initially thought. So what has research shown about stereotype threat? Um, together with Stephen Spencer, psychologist Claude Steele and Joshua Aronson, Spencer again observed that self-fulfilling stereotype threat when black students performed worst after being reminded of their race just before taking verbal aptitude tests. Follow-up experiments have confirmed that negatively stereotyped minorities and women may have unrealized and professional potential. So again, stereotype threat is something that's being studied more and there's some questions about some of this previous research. Um, stereotype threat helps explain to some extent why blacks have scored higher when tested by um, other black individuals and tested by whites. It implies a possible effect of non-black teachers having lowered expectations too. So we are to the learning target reviews for module 64. Um, explain how and why the genders differ in mental ability scores. So males and females tend to have the same average intelligence test scores, but they differ in some specific abilities. Girls are better spellers, more verbally fluent, better at locating objects, better at detecting emotions, and more sensitive to touch, taste, and color. And again, this isn't all girls. There's more within group variability than between group variability. There are some boys that are exceptional in these areas, and there are some girls that are unexceptional. These, these are things that are, we're talking about on average. So boys outperform girls at spatial ability and related mathematics, though boys and girls hardly differ in math computation. Boys seem to outnumber girls at the low, low and high extremes of mental abilities. This is called the variability hypothesis that for whatever reason on a number of things, boys tend to be at the highest end of the bell curve and the lowest end of the bell curve in certain areas. Psychologists debate about evolutionary-based and cultural ex explanations of these differences. Examine how and why racial and ethnic groups differ in mental ability scores. So racial and ethnic groups differ in their average um, intelligence test scores um, across a lot of research. The evidence suggests that environmental differences are largely perhaps entirely responsible for these group differences. Um, Discuss whether intelligence tests are inappropriately biased and explain the influence of stereotype threat on test takers' performance. So aptitude tests aim to predict how well a test taker will perform in a, a given situation. So they are necessarily biased in the sense that they are sensitive to performance differences caused by cultural experience, right? And remember to go back and review those different types of biases. By inappropriately biased, psychologists mean that a test predicts less accurately for one group than for another. In this sense, the, con the near consensus is that most experts consider the major aptitude test unbiased. Stereotype threat is an important concept to understand. It's a self-confirming concern that one will be evaluated based on a negative stereotype 
and it affects performance in all kinds of tests. And there has been a lot of research on this in the past, and there's some new research coming out questioning some of the earlier research. So uh, keep that in mind and keep your eye out for current research in that area. That is the end of the module. Thank you so much for listening. Take care.